The forbidden triple points, I think, have very interesting looking movies, and I was uh, discouraged by Lou, by, uh, by Professor Kaufman, from even calling these, uh, 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 these transitions you see in the movies moves. Uh, but, uh, I mean, they are, of course, all just interesting lifts of, uh, of, uh, of you know, the, um, the flat R3 move. You've got this unordered classical move, which nobody even ever thinks about, apparently. Uh, and this is the, uh, uh, the welded move, as so-called by, uh, by Rourke. Uh, if we start allowing this triple point in our virtual two-knot diagrams, I guess we would call that a welded two-knot diagram. Uh, Likewise, uh, Rourke calls this move it, it the unwelded move, and if we started allowing both of these, we would have an unwelded two-knot diagram, probably a pretty trivial category when I get around to actually analyzing it. That's my prediction. And then there's this other move that I never actually hear anybody ever talk about, the, uh, where, where it's like a mixed move, but it kind of weaves through. Uh, another thing. Say, your move on the left there is called the delta. Oh, is that called the delta move, what I'm calling unordered classical? That's right. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, let's talk about uh, uh, taking virtual two-knot diagrams and deciding whether they are two diagrams, you know, equivalent diagrams, two diagrams of the same virtual two-knot. Uh, we'll let equivalence be through moves, right? It's a diagrammatic theory, so equivalence is through moves. These are the Roseman moves uh, before crossing information has been attached at the uh, curves. There are seven of them, a nice small number, uh, and uh, we are allowed pretty much to put whatever crossing information we want so long as we're not stupid about it. For example, on the uh, the two saddle move here, in the yeah, classical case... Really not a <laughs> you, you don't think that that's rigor? Uh, I'll try and uh, uh, maybe you'll be more satisfied after an ex uh, just using the two saddle move as an example. What do you think is and is not allowed here? Uh, you've got uh, uh, you know these two uh, uh, two crossing curves that come in here and two crossing curves that come out there, and uh, we have the corresponding points before and after in these uh, these two uh, this before and after diagram. So uh, you need to assign crossing information so that the before and after diagram are consistent uh, about the assignment at these the endpoints uh, at the, uh, the boundaries of the of the picture. And that's just a general principle. What, what I'm my my rigorous definition of not being stupid is uh, is to be Probably consistent. To be no, I don't want to be uh, I don't want to be topological yet. I want to be completely diagrammatic. But isn't, isn't all the choices you've made so far are just about being locally consistent. In the cl yeah, for classical crossings, this all this is all you know. The whole classical theory of two knots uh, diagrams comes from uh, knotted surfaces in four space, and there may in fact be ways to realize the uh, uh, virtual two knots as well as topological objects. But uh, I want to work from the diagrams toward that end and start with just a purely formal uh, uh, rules about the types of assignments which are legal. Uh, and uh, so this, this idea about not being stupid in the way you assign information to these uh, diagrams in order to get a valid move, the same principle applies for uh, virtual crossings. There are three more moves in the next slide. The, uh, what the, uh, what I, I, I think, I think uh, Masahiko might be the first one to uh, come up with these names. Uh, the three move, the branch pass, and the, uh, the majestic quadruple point. Um, <laughs> these, uh, these three involve triple points, so again, uh, we'll extend the definition of not being stupid to also say that triple points must be valid. Right? So, the, what I'm trying to tell you is that this theory, unlike in the one-dimensional case, this theory has no forbidden moves. Any move that looks right is okay. You, you see what I'm saying? Right. Uh, and it's, uh, by, by the way, it's, I think it's a, a fun exercise to try and count all of the distinct ways of uh, doing a quadruple move, or any of these moves really, but uh, the quadruple move is 
uh, uh, in particular, uh, food for thought, uh, just a little combinatorial geometry there. How many different ways can I assign crossing information on the six, uh, the six axes of that, uh, of that tetrahedron there? So, I uh, couldn't get away without giving you an example. This is a pretty trivial example of a, a, a diagram that... Uh, understand, by the way, when I talk about two knots, I'm putting no restrictions on what surface you're actually immersing into R3 here. It, it, just so long as it's a, uh, a, a surface which is locally generic, in, in uh, you, I guess I'm taking that you understand what I mean by generic, uh, it can be uh, 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 as many components as you want with uh, whatever genus you want. I'm kind of assuming it's orientable, but that also doesn't matter. Uh, all right, so here's uh, three intersecting spheres, and I pull it apart with a few uh, uh, with a few Roseman moves. And the lesson is that um, whatever crossing assignments I want to put on these, uh, uh, I want to put on these three circles of intersection, so long as the triple points are legal. Then, uh, then they come apart. So, uh, sorry, this is a uh, trivial example. If you want to see a non-trivial example that involves uh, triple points, look at the front cover of Masahiko's book. I wasn't even going to try to draw that. That, that was an insane uh, uh, two-knot, uh, not a sphere. Uh, the, uh, so, okay, here's another uh, picture that I adapted from your book with... Uh, uh, apologies. It, it's uh, it's uh, I started with a uh, a ribbon knotted sphere off the pages of Masiga's book, uh, and I changed one of the crossings to make it virtual. See, uh, there there were um, there were four crossing circles here, and I made the top one virtual. And you may ask, is this uh, trivial or non-trivial? Well, my guess I, I I've yet to actually do any uh, real results here, but uh, this doesn't look like it should be uh, unknotable using the virtual Roseman moves. My, uh, my goals here with this object, with these virtual two knots, are to more or less parallel the development, the early development of virtual one knot theory that was going on uh, uh, in the 90s with uh, uh, Kaufman and uh, uh, Gusarov Pollock Vero, who showed that the category of virtual one knots extends classical one knots that you cannot uh, take uh, uh, you can't unknot a non-trivial classical knot using these uh, extra virtual moves uh, I'm hoping to uh, be able to take some of their proof techniques for that result and adapt it to the two-dimensional case with this object but I'm thinking it's going to be uh, uh, trickier than just you know saying that because of all of the three-dimensional topology that went into their thinking at the time. How much of that is going to uh, uh, roll over here? I'm all ears if you have ideas. I have a number myself. There you have it. Are there any questions for a speaker? Please, call me Jonathan. <laughs> Let's thank Jonathan again. So I believe we meet back here at 2.30 and Allison will be speaking.